Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet, while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. Welcome, everybody. I am so grateful to have you here. We have an amazing show unfolding. Uh, another amazing guest. Uh, this this is someone who's been, you know, holding the, that space of, of of love and connection uh, for for so many for so long, and uh, just an amazing uh, messenger of love. I want to say, I and. She she's a she's a healer. She's got incredible wisdom to share. As uh, I want to say, as a spiritual teacher and healer, um, those are my, you know some of those words are just mine. But like that's how I see it. And she's going to bring you into greater depth within yourself. Is my my sense of who you you know the the essence of who you are, etc. And all those, those sorts of things and more. Um, and has great wisdom to share. So, and then we're going to do that. And then, hey, and then this is an energy scan show. So then we're going to be talking about, you know, you know, more about how amazing she is, what I see in her energy. Um, and as I do these energy scans and see what's going on for people, like a lot of times it activates you guys as well simultaneously. And then we're going to talk about what might be uh, things that could be cleared in order for, for sales to expand for her. And that's perfect because you guys want to expand your sales. If you're listening into this podcast, likely as spiritual entrepreneurs and light leaders. So as we tap it in, you're like, oh, that's one for me too. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to do, okay, I need that needs attention. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. Uh, so Angela, I'm grateful you're here today. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, right. So let's uh, tell them more about you. Angela Marusis is an author, empath, Akashic Records reader, quantum field healer, messenger of hope, and certified life coach. She started broadcasting uh, these, these messages of unconditional love on YouTube in the fall of 2020. She's got a nice following on YouTube. You should check it out. And they have now become a weekly written love letter enjoyed worldwide. And you'll learn how to get those uh, a little bit uh, later here. The reason unconditional love is the centerpiece of her work is because it is the heart of who she is and her healing or her journey of healing. In the spring of 2020, she began writing what she believed at the time was a TED Talk style presentation to be considered for a wellness retreat panel. After writing the presentation, the world shut down. <laughs> to in-person events, and she began to write uh, her workshops. In January of 2021, uh, she did a bunch of, uh, you know, she did a presentation, a bunch of workshops, and uh, in that process, she birthed her healing memoir, Showing Up My Expressions of Love. When Angela's work uh, works with people, she is a messenger of hope that offers safe space uh, to build their unique practices of unconditional love. What could be better? Unconditional love supports us in bridging the connection to ourselves in the present moment and the expansive healing energy that comes from self-acceptance of our own worthiness. So beyond these free weekly messages I was talking about before of unconditional love, she offers one-to-one -one refining experience sessions. We'll talk about that later. She has uh, her books, Showing Up, My Expression of Love, and Birthing of a Phoenix. At which you can learn more about these as well as her YouTube channel at her website, butterflycreations.ca. She is also uh, very excited to be premiering uh, her art ex exhibition, Unconditional Love, A Healer's Healing Journey, scheduled to begin public showing starting in September of 2023, which may have already happened by now <laughs> when this show airs. So it's happening, folks. It's it's all the way live. All right. So Angela, um, that yeah. So wow, you know, we talked uh, prior to do, you know uh, actually having this time together today, and one of the things that really struck me too about you is, uh, you had many experiences of almost leaving this planet, which is a big dramatic sort of story you have to share with the world and the things you've learned through that, I'm sure, right? So uh, 
you know, there's so many different ones. It seems like I forget how many, how many times did you almost leave the planet? So I've had four near death experiences as well as um, what I come to know as book endings. So experiences that I was too young to remember. Um, but once I was told the story, the elements within it actually started mirroring one onto the next and then the closing out of them so it's the safe it's like being in the safety bubble these book endings were set kind of showing me I was safe even if I wasn't conscious at such a young age at five by the time I got to 11 and had my first conscious near-death experience it was already a seed planted within me to know that I was safe and to continue on that journey of learning more about myself. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. So, so what, 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 um, what, have you been aware of this deep connection and awakening you have to unconditional love from a young age? Or is this something like, yeah, no, I totally didn't didn't perceive it uh, so much when I was growing up, but you know, uh, I was, you know, dropped into it later. Or you know, how did this journey unfold into where you're such an uh, ambassador for unconditional love in the world? It um, it definitely started in childhood. Um, the the first conscious experience, uh, near death experience was where I started to recognize it outside of myself as a child, always. A so it started when I was a child, um, definitely always very curious and just following that natural curiosity. As I grew older, I learned that's following your intuition. That's following your heart. But when I had my near first near-death experience that I recall that I was 11 is when I started to see and really sense what I was picking up wasn't always just my energy. It was other people's energy. In that particular experience, I had been with my grandfather and he had fallen asleep at the wheel. None of us got hurt, but it was very hard for him to take this notion that he could have harmed us and scared us. And for me, I could tell right away that he just needed reassurances. And then as I continued, I think as we all do, we kind of become conditioned as we're growing up. We get into school, we get into other things, we get into relationships, we get testing different waters and we can lose ourselves in those lessons. So there kind of became a void where I forgot what love really was, what unconditional love was, and it was the relearning process. It really stepped forward for me about eight years ago, and through stepping forward in very unique ways in terms of my last near-death experience and recognizing that each subsequent one before it had really brought me to a place of better understanding my own feelings and tapping in and putting up those boundaries about what belongs to me, what belongs to others. So I have always been good at loving outside of myself. It was time for me to recognize what I needed to do to love inside myself. And so I rose to that challenge. Mm, nice. Uh, so what were some of the, uh, what are some of the challenges that you ran into when it came to this unconditional love uh, for, for yourself and maybe for others as well? So, I mean, within myself, it's the self-doubts, which no one is exempt from. Um, and they all, you know, they all trickle back to not believing that you're good enough. And they seem to be reinforced, or at least we perceive them as being reinforced in other people's behaviors and attitudes towards ourselves. But the truth is, this is where we're learning about what actually belongs to us and what actually is someone else's problem someone else's perception of us, that's their opinion. 
but our opinion of ourselves should not be a product of how someone else feels about us. Mm -hmm. We have to get good at being good in our own skin. And I think we all have those moments. I think throughout our entire life, we will continue to because the world fosters self-doubt. It allows the world outside of us to, you know, I mean, manipulate and do what it needs to do. So when we strengthen ourselves and we step forward, seeing ourselves as being worthy and whole and lovable and good enough, we're able to not only break those patterns for ourselves, but we also build healthier relationships outside of ourselves when we're healthier like that for ourselves. It's never a one and done. And it's not a, it's a fluid thing. You know, everybody has their good days and their bad days. So, but it's learning not to beat yourself up for the places where you're still learning to pour a little more self-love and care into something that you haven't faced in a while. And that's the interesting thing is it shows you what you've outgrown. And as you peel back the layers of your own healing, you suddenly can find yourself, if you stop and think about it, that you're healing things that are from years and years ago. For myself, just in 2023, I peeled it back to healing situations that happened when I was five, six, and seven. And although they seemed utterly terrifying at first, it was interesting to me because once I made the conscious effort that I was going to face them, that terrified feeling started to drip away and it went to being scared and then it went to being a little nervous. And then I was more available to seeing how I had actually been nurturing my four, five, and six Angela by the way I had raised my own children. I was not leaving them in those situations. And so it was that recognition that I was doing unconditional love and I was loving myself, but I put my children first, but that was nurturing my own inner child. And that sometimes is the easiest way. It's kind of like when the thing with the book, not knowing I was writing a book took the pressure off. What I was writing was I was pouring out my expression of, I didn't want people to feel alone. I didn't want people to, you know, feel like they were the only ones being beaten down by self-doubt. And so by putting myself in the other person's shoes, being empathetic, and standing in the power of my empathy, I was also serving myself and others. So then at the end, when literally I had a vision where my presentation and my workshops just went like this in my third eye, it was like, oh, that is a book. Okay. You know what I mean? So taking that, taking my resistance and my fear about writing a book. So the same thing is true of a lot of our healing patterns. When we push ourselves forward and go, no, it, it's time to deal with this. As we work through those first initial feelings and we feel them and acknowledge them, but we don't let them stay, we start to see where we've actually been nurturing and loving ourselves below the surface, where it was safer to love outside of ourselves or so we thought. Mm -hmm. but we were in that process it was all for our good do you want to meditate and make money let it be simple let it be easy let it be fun go to yoursacredpurpose.com and get your free meditate make money meditation today mm -hmm. right yeah i mean i just um i had a near-death experience at 11 too in a way i mean like i got ran over by a trailer i know i didn't go through a tunnel or anything at all but it was a very uh wild situation and um it was yeah, it took angels and miracles for me not to have gotten killed i just you know i actually wasn't even tremendously hurt but um but yeah i mean it was it was something else and it, what it did bring more towards me is that sense of being fully nurtured i was in bed for weeks and just having friends come over and you just you know those moments you do you realize how 
not that I didn't, because I, I did have that gift, you know, of unconditional love to a degree, you know, growing up and there's always conditions, right. You know, that people put in, <laughs> you know, if you're totally unconditionally loved, except when this happens, <laughs> but that, that, that shows up in our lives. But I remember that and how, you know, like just people just want, you know, coming over and spending time with you and, you know, just all the emotions what people felt and, you know, and, and we're empathic, we feel all that. And you must have felt that so many times with what you've gone through. And, um, and then, yeah, with the kids, you know, I have my own kids and I just dropped one off at uh, college um, for, you know, like, well, I have a stepdaughter that we've done that with before, but just my first, you know, biological daughter, I went off to college and all the emotions and everything of doing that. And um, yeah, there's that like that. Uh, wow, this has been so amazing. Yeah, you're right. It's been so amazing for me. It feels like I've just devoted myself to my kids, but it's really, it's really you're devoting yourself to life itself, and you know, to yourself in a way too, right? Like you know, and so it is. It's 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 quite quite beautiful, and I think. What I'm hearing you point to in a way is um is how I'm hearing it is um if we can recognize that that's what we're really doing is like to, for me, like the crux of of life is is that is is being in devotion to that love for in that connection in the heart of of the life itself. Because being in the physical as infinite beings is kind of weird. Otherwise, like, what, what are we doing here? What's this all about? <laughs> Why did I choose this? Why did I take the red pill or whatever? I just kind of think again. But um, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> many, I mean, many times, like for myself and other people, I've done energy scans. I've seen people like just before they are come down again, they're like, no, please wait a minute. I changed my mind. It's almost like the brainwash to go at first, and then right when they're about to go down to the physical, it's like, what? This is crazy. Like jumping on, like it's like uh uh parachuting, you know, or something. I don't know. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> I'm not sure. Whoa, <laughs> and it's pretty wild, but we're uh we're we're always covered because of you know, we're we're in the arms of unconditional love of source, right? I don't know. That's how I see it. That's that's kind of what comes up for me is what you shared. What you shared, and I think you can, we can't talk about love enough, right? I mean, it's 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 the essence of so much in our life. Yeah, yeah, and we we spend we spend a lot of time like learning more about ourselves and our expressions of it. Um, and recognizing where it's reflected back to us. And we've been trained to look for the outside reflection. So as we do that, I think more and more people are starting to see where they want to actually feel it inside instead of just always having this outward reflection, this ability to be on your own at times and still feel safe in your own skin, in your own thoughts, knowing that, you know, you're nurtured and cared for there. The, the thing about near-death experiences is that there are the medical ones, which most people subscribe to. They have doctors there. You're dying on tables. You may or may not see light. For a lot of us, yourself included, myself, we experience things that are near death because for me time goes void or slows down um, physics and gravity I hydroplaned under an 18 wheeler and the minute I started to hydroplane that bubble of protection that comes in the near-death experiences and I now feel it outside of it it's like running your fingertips gently along the veil between worlds is it it snaps into place and clearly i was told foot off the pedal and hands off the wheel this is mm. not you mm. and so i'm two-thirds of the way in and it's like all of a sudden the reflector on the side of the transport uh started tearing up the front of my truck and eventually embedded in the engine block 
and I was pretty much almost all the way under. So this is that divine time and order because things were slowed down and gravitational pulls and all of the things that needed to be. That was not anything that anyone could orchestrate as well as you plan to pull that off. So the, when you experience those types of near-death experiences, a lot of people tend to be scared and confused. And mm. so if I do do my workshops or when I do my workshops now about those, I go in talking about grace because that's what it is. It's the grace of unconditional love in a much bigger sense than you realize. A lot of people come because they're curious and almost 50% of the curious people are people who have had experiences, but they believe they have to fit in a certain box. And because I don't speak in boxes and labels, it allows them to kind of open up and then they can see this perspective and they can see the gift because near-death experiences are a gift. The gift that they bring to you is a very personal one. And I figured mine out. I actually did a series on YouTube, which you can get through uh, the channel about what that gift is and how you break it open for yourself. Mm. Beautiful. So, yeah, I remember because I, I can't shake that image of, yeah, when I'm under the, the trailer getting run over, like, like how time just kind of stood still or slowed way down at least like it just slowed way down and so you would think like it all happened I'm sure very fast right within two three seconds maybe I mean and yet it seemed like la -da -da -da. okay interesting we're under here we're getting run over very very this is very weird I'm gonna die very young it looks like maybe here and this, this is what this is a cognition I'm having, you know, underneath the trailer. And it's just, you're, you're not, I'm not worried at the moment, right? Because part of you feels like you're about to leave anyway. You're like, well, yeah, okay, I guess I'm, I'm popping out. And, and, and uh, this, this, uh, you know, indirect suicide attempt is about to work, you know? Okay, good. I get to go back home. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> That's how I kind of see those situations, right? And it's like, only when it was over, me getting run over, and I realized, nope, that didn't happen. Ah, and I screamed in pain, right? <laughs> it's like, whoa, it snapped me right back into my body fully, right? But I, it was just, yeah, like you're in eternity, but it, when you get in that deep in that, those quantum, whatever, I don't know, quantum something, you know, quantum moments or whatever you want to call it, um, it's like, yeah, it's like, wow, you really do experience the depth of the depth of life and also the, yeah and often the depth of love can come within that too that, that sense of being held and taken care of and it's there all the time you know like for me it's in, in different ways for different people so for me i can just if if uh dad my wife's worried about something i could be like oh but we have our love for each other immediately immediately if we go right then it brings us right into our hearts for each other then there's no problem, right? Right in that moment, if we both drop in our heart, any perception of a problem is instantly dissolved because that's, the, you know, with love, there is no problem. You know, there, there's no problem there in that depth. And so that's why I think it's so cool what you do is anything that brings people more into that to wake them up is amazing. Yeah, one of the things that I... I like to rem remind people and really help them sort of test those waters is about the language that we use. So um, instead of saying when something happens, if, mm. if is much more powerful, if is, you know what I mean? If is somewhere out there, if I get there, then I'll have the information. I'll be the person. It's a choice point. Mm -hmm. In the present moment, I don't want to create a choice point. I mm -hmm. want to live in the moment. Mm -hmm. And if there's a choice to be made, then it's only made in the present moment where I have the power, where the information is. So words like if and yet become mm -hmm. really those places of breaking open the worry and the fears of things. Mm -hmm. The way in which we speak to ourselves and speak about ourselves is very important. And 
it's not only a love language with us, but it's a love language with the universe. And it's a love language that also attracts people to us who understand that same frequency, that same love language. Mm -hmm. um, my, so my family is Greek, my yaya, which is Greek for grandmother. Me too, she, I had a yaya. <laughs> ah, there you go. So she, she had a very specific love language that was her comfort zone, right? Your love language is your comfort zone. For those of us who are empathic in that, we learn to pick up other people's love language patterns in order to be of service, but also for our own understanding about that belongs to them and this belongs to us. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, her love language belonged to something called the King James Bible version. I was raised outside organized religion, so I couldn't tell you what that really means. But when my papu, passed away and she chose the uh, inscription for the back of the headstone. When I went to the cemetery to read it, I was blown away because, not because I suddenly knew something about a book, but because I now understood that my Yaya and Papu believe the same way I did. But my expansive energy, my expansive understanding and my way of expressing my love language was not confined to one particular comfort zone. I've learned to be comfortable in myself. So I've learned to navigate other people's comfort zones to be not only of service, but to also be of service to myself. And so it's the passage in Corinthians about come and I'll tell you about a mystery. We won't all die, but we will change. And I would just let, I stood there dumbfounded and I went, wow, we believe the same thing. Because for so long, I had thought we, we were on two totally different pages, but it wasn't, it's language. So yeah. our words have power, whether they're written, they're spoken or thought. They have power within us. And then it's about how we express that power outwardly. Mm -hmm. So if we diminish ourselves inwardly, we, we put that out into the world too. Mm -hmm. How we perceive ourselves as less than, as not enough. So really that self-love is unconditional love, the starting point, because mm -hmm. we have to speak nicely to ourselves. Our thoughts matter, our words, our actions, our intentions they're all intertwined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. So what, so when people are having like a lot of doubts, um, how can they drop back into unconditional love? So taking a step back from the situation, from the question, from what they believe is a choice point, not saying it's not a choice point, but there tends to be pressure. If pressure is being exerted, you need to understand where the where it's being exerted. And the only way to do that is to remove yourself from other people for a little while and figure it out. Because if it's a power and dynamic control of someone else needing you to do something, so they are pressuring you, that's not love. Those are conditions. And if you can't step back to take a break to figure out what's in your best interest, that tells you right there that you're not in a situation with a person at the moment that's in your best interest. And so taking that step back, mm -hmm. a lot of people are afraid to take that step back because they don't want to lose what they think is love. But the truth is, if you can take a step back and it's respected by another person, that's love. Mm. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, that is challenging um, because of our own self-doubts, right? So if they're hitting on your self-doubt, yeah, I, why'd you do this or why this or why that or whatever it is, um, you might be like, yeah, uh, I'm failing or I did something wrong or something like that. A self-doubt comes up and then, but if you, um, so when it's hitting you, like, um how do you have so so Angela if if someone in your family comes to you and starts hitting you with all this stuff like 
this is what I think. This is what's going on. Let's say it happened. Yeah. Uh, literally, what do you do? Do you say, I, I can hear where you're coming from, uh, but I need to I need to leave you right now. <laughs> I mean, like, how do you handle it, though? Yeah. So for, for myself, mm -hmm. I, I remind myself as I'm listening to them mm -hmm. that what they're expressing is their like their opinion of the situation, their opinion of the solution. And so I listen to hear what their beliefs are, what they think in this moment about what needs to be done and how they're perceiving it. Mm -hmm. And I let them talk only for the point of listening, not responding, which is really hard if you happen to be getting triggered because we can all be triggered. When if it's a situation that there's a trigger, then I have my go-to, which is, I hear you. And I have some different feelings about that. I haven't really thought about it. So I just, I need like a moment here, or I'm going to need a little time to kind of figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then, you know I mean? What that push is, whether there is a push externally or internally. Sometimes we get the internal push where, you know what I mean? Where it feels like, we're screaming in our heads going, I just want to tell this person to just go away. I'm tired of all of this. Yeah. And it's like, okay, but you are a grown up. You can use respectful language. Yeah. I understand that's how you see it. I'm not feeling like there's something I'm supposed to do right now, mm -hmm. but I, you know what I mean? I'm like, but I hear you. And I, yeah. and I get that, you know, this has got you very upset. I'm not really feeling upset. It's understanding the upset feeling. Is there upset in you or is it just upset in them? Because everyone has empathy. Everyone has intuition and can mm -hmm. sense and read energy. It's about refining it. Mm -hmm. So, and you will be, I have been, I've been reactionary. I've snapped back. Mm -hmm. The part of unconditional love that comes in is when it when it starts to die down instead of judging yourself you kind of just review it for yourself and it's like mm, okay I was triggered because this is what I was feeling and it does belong to me you know I was feeling frustrated frustration is something everybody likes to say is I'm I feel frustrated and it's because this person needs to clean up this it's their responsibility and I always go people are good but they're not that good not one person can be solely responsible for everything you know what I mean like so frustration is a feeling we will all spend time with mm -hmm. and it really the root of it is inside of us and so is the solution and the solution is what is it about that that frustrates me like if it happens to be a sibling, well, what is it that's frustrating? Mm -hmm. One of my frustrations in the past has been that as the oldest sibling, they come to me and demand that I fix it. And yet I know it's not my responsibility, but it frustrates me. So changing the language, mm -hmm. I'm sorry that, you know, you're frustrated with this, but mm -hmm. this is your responsibility. You've yeah. made choices and you've said things. Mm -hmm. And I can stand next to you, mm -hmm. but you're going to actually have to fix this for yeah. yourself because that's how you take back your power. That's one thing as an empath, we consider ourselves fixers for a long time right. because it works because we can read the energy. We can read the room. We can move things around. We can, you know what I mean? We know all the polite things and the not so polite things to say at times to kind of like put people in situations in their places, mm -hmm. but we're not really doing ourselves or anybody a favor it, when we are taking on their emotions mm -hmm. and projecting out what we believe they should be doing instead of being like, mm, nope. Yeah. That's something as a child, I think when you get into your teenage years, that's something that really shows up is the empathic children come teenagers. It's like terrible twos all over again. I can, in my own mind's eye, I can see some of mine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We just wanted to fix because we wanted to go back to our peaceful place, not recognizing that 
our peaceful place is here mm -hmm. and whatever's going on out here, we have a right to keeping it on the other side of our own barrier of, of healthy safety. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, let's talk about, um, let's talk more about the work that you do. I know you offer sessions to, to refine people, you know, so that they can refine that empathy, et cetera. Um, so tell me more about that as we move into, we're moving into the energy scan territory, but I like to start by kind of fleshing out what your work is more so the audience can understand. And it also helps me in tuning into your, your business and all that sort of stuff. So, so tell me about that. What is this refining of the energy about and how do you, you offer, I know you've got a session and whatnot, but how do you, how do you work with people with that? Okay, so um, refining experience session is my one on one private sessions. Mm -hmm. So when what I like to remind people is when you're ready to show up for yourself, you want to invest in new ways, you you have something that is challenging you, but you know that you're ready to break a pattern or you're looking for your next move. Refining experiences are defined by you. And so when people show up in these sessions, that's an investment in themselves. And that, Im that immediately brings my whole toolbox. So if we need to go into your Akashic record, you know, if my spirit team and your spirit team are like, no, we're going into the Akashic record. We're looking at even um, the astrological patterns in your birth chart you know, there's these part of fortune, the part of fortune, which is the treasure chest of you that actually unlocks all of the levels. And when people start to understand just the simplicity of that placement in their chart, it starts to unlock new things for themselves. It's about expanding your perspective of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so the quantum energy field is unconditional love. It runs through every level of being the Akashic records are contained in the grid. And when you are actually tapping in to your intuition, when you are being empathetic, where you are being loving, you are actually tapping in to that oneness, to that whole grid. So in my refining experience sessions, they obviously are client driven. And in that toolbox is everything. Everything that not only have I learned through experience, but also every fit piece of wisdom that I need to tap into from the Akashic Records through my guides and your guides comes through divine time and order. Mm -hmm. um, the sessions are booked for uh, an hour and um, sometimes they go a little longer if it's about a language thing right? Sometimes they have me, they have me say it in one direction. And then it's like, yeah, no, we need to kind of change the language. We need to help them expand their love language. And the way we do that is by changing our own perspective of how people connect. Mm -hmm. And so, so many people think that they only connect with people physically, they mm -hmm. forget there's emotional, mental, and spiritually. And so sometimes that is the major block is because they're so into the 3D existence. They're mm -hmm. identifying themselves only by what they have and don't have, what they can see. And I think that's it. Some piece of them knows that there's more. And so that's really where my near-death experiences come in, having that compassion for they haven't seen it for themselves, but mm -hmm. you've seen it and you've heard it and you know it. So being able to speak through that compassion right. to help bring them into the emotional body, the intellectual body and the spiritual. So you've got the one-to-one -one sessions. And then do you like have, do people book one at a time? Do they at some point maybe commit to a period of time of working with you? Do they do that? Or how does that work? So they, they commit to the one session and then we customize if need be. To be mm -hmm. honest, very rarely do I have clients commit to like two or three sessions. 
Um, because what happens in a session with me, they have to go and integrate it. Integrate. And people, people take the time they need to integrate it. And I'm not here to force anything. So right. my clients return, my clients return when they feel that they've integrated it and they're like curious about now, what would I like to do? Yeah. And then, and then they come back. Okay. I, yeah. Okay. And do you offer other, other things outside of the, like the books and stuff like that? Do you have, I don't need, if you got a lot, I don't need everything. I'm just getting, you gotta get a taste of it. Like, do you have groups? Do you have other, other products and things? So I, um, I do workshops from time to time. Mm -hmm. I do those as, and when I feel called to. Mm -hmm. That's inspired. Okay. So workshops. Are... I have one additional self-love quest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that particular one, I don't put on the website, but when people are in the refining experiences, or if I'm giving a talk, whether it be on a podcast, I'll ask people if they're interested. Um, mm -hmm. They can email me, Angela.ButterflyCreations at gmail.com. It's on the website. So this quest, though, is done with a group of four individuals. And the universe literally puts their frequencies together. And mm -hmm. so we go on a five hour quest. Okay. And after the quest, there is integration time. And then there is a next step. And that's done with that's done individually with each person who was there on the quest. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a very transformative tool. It's a powerful tool. Um, and it takes about five hours as a group to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it as much as I lead it and my spirit team leads it, mm -hmm. it also empowers people to not only lead themselves, but to take that step outside their comfort zone and use their own empathic abilities to help another who happens to be at the table. And so it really builds this, new way of doing connection to yourself and your dreams, but also seeing where you are part of the bigger piece. Okay. Okay, great. So um, that sounds amazing. And so you've got these really powerful experiences for people to have of getting connected, of, of shifting, of integrating, of healing, of, you know, like all these different words come to mind. So that's, that's amazing. And so the, just the basic download I'm getting or intuition I get as I hear you talk after talking to thousands of entrepreneurs and, you know, healers and stuff is I just get, you know, you're in, in, well, first of all, your motivation, of course, is one of pure love. I mean, you're just like, I'm here to serve, right? Like it, it, typical, you know, for, for someone, especially the empathic healer, you know, like that's really empathic and really connected in the heart and really moves from that space. Um, so, so typically what I see, and I don't know if it's a fact for you, but my, my experience is, is that sometimes, you know, there's a phase, especially when we're, we're a little earlier in charging for it and stuff like we tend to um, not want to charge too much. You know, <laughs> I want this to be inaccessible for people, right? We need to make sure, you know, we're, people don't see it's for just for money. We're sincere. Um, that That's usually the energy is that's emanating, right? And so, um, so what I see is usually people have these beautiful services and, and opportunities for people to be served. And they get such results, you know, uh, tangible and intangible. Um, and, and, and you know, the person doing it at one level is like, I'm a cloud nine though doing it. I don't, I don't mind. And, and then another part of them is like, yeah, probably should, you know, figure out how to go to another level with this, the money part of the sales. So, so tell me if um, I'm guessing you're along these lines, but yeah, tell me where you're at with, with all that. Cause that's kind of what's coming through. Yeah. So that, that has been the process of the last couple of years and sort of figuring that out, mm -hmm. which um, is why there are levels to kind of, for people to invest first in understanding whether there's someone at, 
that they can work with me. So mm. the free weekly love letter is a good one. Mm. The next level really would be to buy the healing journey. As mm. much as it is my memoir, it's actually a survival guide mm. to the self doubts, to mm. breaking those patterns. Mm -hmm. I don't hold back in mm. sharing the complexities and mm. some of the very deeply personal wounds and how I moved myself forward. So mm. it's not, it's written in a way where I share it not in ways that would traumatize you, but in ways in which most people go, I've felt that way, or damn, I've had that experience. Yeah. And I give you the nuts and bolts of it to then shift you like I did, but much more quickly because it's in a book into that self-love, that unconditional love empowerment mm -hmm. to all the little bite-sized pieces that can go into mm -hmm. breaking yourself and moving beyond that to mm -hmm. seeing things, including yourself and new perspectives. Mm -hmm. So they kind of work through, you know I mean? There are people who resonate, who see me on these things. They love, they book the session because they're in it. They're investing in themselves and they can feel it. For people who aren't sure, I would say, test out the love letters if you like that love language and that you can identify and you feel supported. Maybe you'll jump to a session or maybe you'll want to check out the book. But that's why over the last couple of years they were created was because even for myself, like you said, there's this wanting to be of service. So the free love letter fills my heart with pleasure to put that out there, knowing that the only thing that restricts it is if you haven't signed up for it and that's on you. And then right. the book is that next level of being able to sit privately with right. those messages. Totally. totally. So let me jump in because, um, yeah. Yeah. So what I'm getting at is, is, I, is just kind of a constant thing. I'm sure you hear in the marketplace and it drives some people nuts, but charge more. <laughs> so yeah, because uh, I I was imagining a number and I was a little off as close to it as I looked up what the session price is. Guys, run! Don't don't walk. Run to her offer page, okay, and, and take advantage of this offer because it's a, it's a great opportunity for you. So what I want to what I would love to see anyway from my end, I'd love to see you expand. You know, like. What you're charging because you have you know i felt it in this uh especially in the early when you're setting energy for the for this time together i can feel how you hold an energy and it steers in a direction i could totally feel it i mean so you're very powerful you know and be able to like you said earlier set those energy containers and whatever all the different things right you're gonna get this energy in this way and it's gonna be all great you know and so you're very talented in that and that not everybody's so versed in energy that way, where it's just natural for you. Like, yeah, you know, like it's through lifetimes, but right, but like, you know, oh, it's, okay, woo, 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 and all this stuff. And you're making all these tweaks and stuff, and you do that, I'm sure, beyond their session, you know. So you're like, oh yeah, I'm still, oh, I'm thinking of them. Oh yeah, oh, just a tweak and oh, this and whatever, you know, strengthen here. And so you've got all that beautiful stuff going on, and it's just like for you to receive the love that you are, um, you know, you don't have to do it financially. I would say, if you don't want to make more money, that's fine. I don't, you know, that I don't care. I think there's room for everything, right? Like yeah, it's room for everything. For people that are not making very much money all the way to people that make all kinds of money and blah, 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 all every, any, any combinations. But so what I encourage you is just to realize, you know, people may want to value at a higher level. Like it might, Part of them might feel like I feel kind of bad. Like I wish I was investing more. Maybe you know, like they might so consciously. I may never say it. Maybe they do. I bet they do uh, at times, at least. So, but they're wanting to. They want to give commensurate to what you're actually giving, and so the more you will uh, up that the amount, it'll be great. So what's you know stopping your sales? We'll just go right there. Uh, and in this show, like like I say, I never know where it's going to go each show, but. Um, I would say like just realizing that principle alone, like that's a huge one right there. Um, because yeah, I can tune into your chakras and all that stuff. Like, 
you know, you've got this ability to be so wide open and your, your, your crown chakra is kind of constantly like, whoa, like it's like everything's a playground. But then we get into the, the, the third eye, it's kind of tense because there's so much you could get into it. So it's like, yeah, no, just stay focused here. Yes. <laughs> Where are we going to go all over the place? <laughs> but you've got this strong, psychic, powerful energy. And I, I you know, I, I would love to see what else you could accomplish for in a fun way, in a beautiful way for everyone, you know, by continuing to refine that gift as well. It'd be, it'd be really cool to see like on my side, you know, and working with people around these things, like to see what you could do with that. And then I'm always like with, with, with the monetization too, like let's add that in. Doesn't, you don't have to go insane with your pricing. I'm just saying like, what if you bumped it up? Yeah. How about we bump it up some to start with? And, you know, and I always say, why not have a premium offer? And maybe the five hour thing is, I don't know, but you have something that's not just hundreds of dollars, but maybe it's that, you know, the thousands of dollars and all those sorts of things. So offering these different things uh the throat chakra you you're you're you're, you're pleasant you're well you're well expressed you can be tough you can uh, you could get after i get it you got all that going on and then it, there's a clenching when it comes to owning your deeper worth and value still i see it it's I, it's just kind of clenches there so so the the thing and then i feel in the power center when i say that like it's just it's just it's there's something there so uh, so I get the sense of like ghosts around or something like, remember, don't do that. Don't you misuse your powers. And guys, maybe you have, maybe you have, maybe there was like, we've one lifetime. Now we're, you kind of screwed around a little bit. Maybe you should have, you didn't know better, horsing around and maybe you shouldn't have been doing that. Right. And then, it, but it, ha it haunts us, you know, it's, it's in our field and until it does it. And so anyway, so I noticed that sort of energy around and I just think really seeing that, you could, I mean, the other thing I get is just that you could, uh, you've got a huge, you know, huge emerging platform with YouTube and, you know, you just could have so many, such a space that you hold, you have such a space that you hold where so many people can be served easily through the grace of the presence that flows through you. And there's this divine distribution. So I totally, I don't know if you've done this yet, but I totally look at how can we monetize that channel where people out of expressions of gratitude can just contribute. Yes, you know, I mean, yeah, there's Patreon or whatever and the super chats or whatever. I, I don't know which form it is yet, but I'm just getting like, man, that would be huge, you know, and the way people, you know, basically to set things up where it's so easy for people to feel like, they can get really in a way so little from you, but yet gain so much from it. Like that is a thing that you have, but you as well as others, like we tend to still be like, no, I got to put more into it. <laughs> and uh, sometimes it may be true, but often it's illusion. It's like, we might be able to give in an energy sense. We may be able to transmit more and give even more powerful transmission sometimes by giving a bit less or a lot less in some cases. So we have to realize, no, that deeper energy, right? That deeper thing. And you're very aware of it, but like owning the value of that much more would be do wonders for you. Um, so there is something about just maybe you, you're extremely good at that, like being focused, organized, sharp. You're very good at that. But I think in the healing work, sometimes it, it's like it just slides off <laughs> sometimes. And then I'm not saying always, I'm just saying like you have more of it to bring in. And when, if you brought that more in and put your business hat on stronger, your business could just go like through the roof, like through the roof. So, <laughs> and so what that looks like is a deeper conversation, but that's what I'm seeing. And those are the kind of downloads I'm getting for you. So yeah, um, we could go more, but I'm, I'm getting like, we're up on time a little bit. So yeah. So Angela, any, uh, thanks for receiving that, by the way, I really appreciate you taking it in. Um, so what, uh, yeah, reflections, thoughts, uh, do you have directly to what I was saying? So, yeah, you were validating because I kept hearing retreats. I have been channeling for about the last week or so, um, very specific messages about doing retreat work. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I always initially would think of retreat work as sort of being groups, but there is, there's a lot more value in that very customized. And I love the customized. I love the one-on-ones. 
don't get me wrong. I like the groups. Mm -hmm. Sometimes managing the cross energies in the groups mm -hmm. is, you know, something that we all struggle with. Mm -hmm. So doing that retreat in that much more customized mm -hmm. because everything that I do is customized. The truth is every single one of us is unique. We're customized. The word is unique, mm -hmm. but when we're talking with the business hat, it's the customized side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've been receiving those downloads. So thank you for the clarification and more clarification that it's like, yeah, it's, it's actually the retreat style because yeah. then we're going to work through not just the present moment, but setting up and mm -hmm. seeing all of the pieces so that mm -hmm. you're building off that foundation. Because a yeah. lot of the times people, when they first come in in that hour, that's mm -hmm. looking at the foundation and stripping back the stuff that's been hiding your foundation. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you can see the foundation, now mm -hmm. we're going to build. That's a retreat energy that to me, that, that screams the word retreat, because that is where you're going to hyper-focus on, this is the foundation. So now what's the dream? Let's put the, let's put the pieces in. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. So yeah, you're a big, big time channel. So as I'm talking, you're just ah, boom, 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 you get your downloads and it's all aligning. So I like that. That's fun. Um, you're like, yeah, whatever you said, but I'm getting this like, <laughs> kind of. It is aligned with what you said, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of, kind of having fun with it. But um, okay, so great. So um, guys, like, let me know like what you might have gained through through what was coming through for me. Because honestly, what I just said applies to a number of people that are listening, right? Like, applies to you guys. Let me know, like, yeah, that's true for me too, and whatnot. Share it. If you can comment when you're listening, tell us or what has resonated that you've heard from Angela as well. She shared so much wisdom earlier in the show. Uh, even now, you know, like everything she says emanates wisdom and love, right? <laughs> so share, 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 share. Um, and and Angela, uh, you know, we're at the time of the show where I love to ask you, like we've been talking about these refining sessions and your, your, your you know, your mem we got your memoir, et cetera. So where can people uh, uh, take advantage of all that uh, and find out more? So butterflycreations.ca is the website. Mm -hmm. And um, it's actually, um, it's up. It's about to go live into a new upgraded format um, in time for my art ex exhibition. So mm -hmm. Unconditional Love, A Healer's Healing Journey. The, the joy in that um, is really when I was writing the messages of unconditional love deep in those healing places, I had a curiosity about painting. So I picked up the paintbrush and as I was writing, I was then spending the evenings painting. So these are the paintings that came through inspired by the messages and the downloads and sharing those out mm -hmm. um, into the world. The exhibition is free, but through the exhibition, I actually sell um, art cards. I sell my journals and things like that. So for me, that is that putting people in a room together. And the wonderful thing about art and mm -hmm. creativity is that it's subjective. And so you can tell when people are standing in front of a piece what mm -hmm. resonates and what res doesn't resonate. And it mm -hmm. just, it's an expansion of that joy, right? It's the ripple effect of that energy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just like the love letters, the books and the sessions, mm -hmm. what you do for yourself, what you take in for yourself, you actually expand it mm -hmm. because it changes your perspective which helps to change your language, your mm -hmm. actions, your intentions, and your new choice patterns. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sitting on what with one person, I can actually affect five, six hundred, a thousand people within just a few weeks mm -hmm. because of that wonderful ripple effect. Mm -hmm. So I like to remind people never discount who you are and how you show up in the world and how you show up for yourself. Absolutely. One million percent. 
All right. So you guys check that all out. We've got the links in the show notes and um, and you may see a link too. And if you're on YouTube with a, a link to our website uh, right there, and you can go ahead and check out all about Angela with her weekly love letters and sessions and all the fun, awesome, powerful, amazing energy she brings. Uh, take advantage of that. All right, and then for myself, if you want to check me out, you can go to yoursacredpurpose.com, get my free meditation, make money meditation. Let's get into the energy of money. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let the energy drop in. Let the answers come to you through meditation, opening up your energy, your chakras, all that good stuff, and uh, be guided, be taken away into what's there for you now. You know, what's, what's pinging now? So you can take advantage of that at yoursacredpurpose.com, the free meditate and make money meditation and ways you can meditate and make money uh, is also part of that gift. Um, and then additionally, I have a Rock Your Sacred Purpose energy scan consultation. So we take a full hour to do what we're doing in just a few minutes, kind of here. It wasn't definitely, it wasn't that too long anyway. Um, so we take a full you know hour to really dive in and take a look um and also you know to evaluate if i can help you beyond that session so that's a session that's available you can find it right on my website it's an amazing opportunity guys uh it's priced to the level where like you know that's that's the lowest point of entry probably to get in front of me for a one-to-one -one support so uh check that out and um you know take advantage because i'll be uh, looking through your entire energy system and also helping you to, you know, burst through any limits that you have so you can rock your purpose with money and sales and impact and all the rest, right? So check that out at yoursacredpurpose.com. All right. So Angela, um, man, I just I just really appreciate, you know, the the, the like the angel, like the the get like a sense of pixies and I don't know, like these different energies and I just appreciate your energy, who you are, how you're helping humanity. You know, you've descended from the heavens to be a blessing to everyone. <laughs> appreciate that. And uh, so thank you for being on the show today. Thank you very much for being here. Letting me be here. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, everybody. So to all our listeners, keep on tuning in and we'll keep on rocking it here at Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Till next time, everyone. The Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each Wednesday and Saturday. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www.yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.